What's up, you guys? I'm Michaela Jill Murphy, the original voice actor of Toph Beifong in Nickelodeon's Avatar The Last Airbender, and fly with me to London to see the opening night of Avatar in concert. First, we deal with the beautiful traffic of Los Angeles. All right, we are in the International Terminal. Um, this is my first time carrying like a real camera with like a microphone in public, and I feel absolutely absurd. All right, let's head to gate 133 today for our flight. Luckily, it looks like there might not be anybody next to me. We will see, we will see. No one sat next to me. It was amazing. We have made it to London. I have donned a coat, which is appropriate because it is cold here. All right, we are off to take the Heathrow Express, which is an express train from the airport into London Paddington. We made it to London Paddington. Isn't this train station beautiful? Okay, now we hop on a couple other trains to head to our hotel for the weekend. All right, we have arrived at my hotel. This is the Hoxton in, it's, it's pronounced, I think, S Suffolk. It's spelled like Southwark, but I think it's pronounced Suffolk. I don't know. London people, you can correct me. And uh, let's, do, let's do a little room tour. And here we are. It's super cute. Super cozy, full length mirror, which if you know me, you know is very important. This little radio is so cute, oh my gosh. I love the color combination of this sage wall with this maroon headboard. I mean, look at that, boom, right there. That should be on a postcard. Gorgeous, and, and, hold on, hold on. I believe that is Big Ben. My stepsis Olivia is also gonna come hang out with me this weekend and come to the concert, so, we will introduce her once she gets in. All right, Olivia has arrived. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> so she's not prepared for me to have this in her face all weekend, but it's gonna be great. It is the morning of the concert, but before we go listen to beautiful Avatar music, we're gonna go check out a museum. Classic double-decker. To start off our day, we're gonna check out some fashion exhibits, the Victorian Albert Museum. We're clearly very fashionable today. We're ready, do you think? Coco Chanel would be proud. Museum completed. We're going to try a Sunday roast at this really cute place called The Swan. I have never had Sunday roast before. This looks so good. A little pre-concert snack. It is Sunday night, January 21st, and we are at the Royal Festival Hall in South Bank Center. This is our occasion for the evening. All right, ooh, a little chilly, it's a little chilly. Let's go inside. We've got an hour till showtime. We are inside the Royal Festival Hall, the calm before the storm. We are here at the Avatar and Concert opening night in London. Who are you? My name is Aelith. Um, I'm a lifelong Avatar fan. If you had to pick an element, what, what kind of vendor are you? If I was to think about the elements and what they can do, I'd probably still go Earth. Yeah, we're, we're big fans of Earth bending here. Yeah. yeah, big fans. I have my Momo. Oh, no. I've got my black milk kimono, which is also Black Avatar. milk. We love black milk. Oh, let's get the full. There we go. Oh wow. Oh, there is Momo <gasps> on my shoulder. Oh my god. I do have upper all the way down my, my arm. You you very well me sleeve. maybe the biggest <laughs> Avatar fan uh, ever. Okay, what kind of benders would you guys be? Definitely um, air bending. Air benders are super powerful, but they have like this moral code. I've always because... kind of thought I'd like to be an earth bender because I like okay. the idea of like building stuff. But uh -huh. then like I'm a super softy and I'm a vegan, so in reality I'm probably going to be a, an air bender okay. at the end of the day. Okay. You know? Yeah, you're definitely sounding a little twinkle toes ish. Okay, what kind of vendors would you guys be? Definitely water. Okay, we got a <laughs> yeah. water vendor. I would be fire, probably. Fire? Yeah. All right, so we got a sugar queen, and then, you know, we got someone who burns my feet. That's and I awesome. make a habit to just binge it every year on Netflix. Of course. It's got some very important moral lessons that we can apply today. Do you Most have a, a favorite one? Like an overarching moral lesson that stands out to you every time you watch it? Nothing is better than having a fascinating conversation with a stranger over a cup of tea. What a favorite fitting comment. Keep your knees high, twinkle toes. All right, that was so much fun. It's time to head into the theater now that we've said hello to some fans and watch the show. Ah! We have arrived. We are ready for the concert. Get a little fit check here. Olivia's in a floral blazer, some green pants. Olivia's, Olivia's an earthbender. Olivia's ready to be an earthbender. I'm in like schoolgirl chic, and she's, she's more earthbender than I am. So thank you all for being here on this very special evening as we celebrate the wonderful music from Avatar The Last Airbender, composed by Jeremy Zuckerman. My name is Brian Konitsko. 22 years ago, uh, Michael D. 
Martino and I created Avatar together. Tonight, we get the rare treat of experiencing just how powerful those emotions can be when performed by a live orchestra. Avatar is about different things to different people. For many, it's about a young monk who survives a genocide and must accept his destiny, master the four elements, and find a way to end a war while being true to his pacifist beliefs. Others would argue the entire series revolves around a disgruntled merchant of cabbages. <laughs> many tears cried. I feel like hearing all of book one and book two, that's how they split it up, and then they're saving book three for act two, is just wild because you're like feeling it in your body and it's like, I don't know, I, it, it's, it's just like kind of overwhelming for the senses but in like an amazing way. Merch, merch. How are you liking the show so far? Really, really good. Do you I've cried it? about four times. <laughs> this is fitting. We've both cried a, a lot so Several far. Times. Do you have a, a favorite part, a part that's maybe made you emotional aside from that? Yeah. Sugar to sugar to the start. At the very beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah just like the intro. <laughs> Show is done. Jeremy was amazing. Good morning. It is. It's the morning after the opening of Avatar in concert. It was such a cool experience. I feel like anyone who loves going to concerts, you know, loves listening to anything live, uh, is going to understand how cool this is. But I have not done something like this in a while, and hearing and feeling the music in person. Uh, it's pretty unparalleled. You're able to hear all of these nuances that you can't really hear in the show, because especially, you know, music in the show is layered in with dialogue, with transition, you know, sequences and sounds, so you're not hearing the music in its entirety as, as much as you will in concert. If you're a fan of Avatar in any way, shape, or form, I wholeheartedly recommend going. I know that seems obvious. Also, I'm a little biased. I really love the uh, blue spirit music. Dinga, 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 dinga. Like, I don't know why I love that part so much, but I do. And aside from that, oh, 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 what's it called? Like the, the song with the kalimba that's like, I think officially titled into, into the night sky or into a night sky, I can't remember. Hearing that live was gorgeous. Uh, the end of book two was I don't know, like the finale was beautiful and, and I loved it, but the end of book two was like really intense, which is funny because I just finished the end of book two in Tea Time with Toph like a couple days ago. And it's really intense. I mean, they're, no, they're not in a good place uh, at the end of book two and the music really reflects that. Um, it's just very tumultuous, very heavy, very f foreboding almost. Um, yeah, so anyway, the end of book two was Intense. I've got one day left in London now because uh, I did not want to do that to myself where I was flying back the next day. So today, while I'm letting last night sink in, we're gonna go to a couple thrift stores, maybe read in a tea shop, one of my favorite things, and then probably try to hop in and see another piece of theater tonight because when in London. In a theater for the third time this weekend, went to go see a lovely play called Blood on Our Hands. It was, it was a little dark, but it was good. All right, time to head back to the airport and go home. Last morning in London is once again on brand. A little rainy, with water on the ground. It's all right, a little rain never hurt anyone. Rain hits different in London, you know what I mean? All right, let's go home. The inside of the Heathrow Express is often pretty empty, pretty quiet. 
cute purple seats, and it zooms you to London Heathrow in 15 minutes. All right, we are once again getting onto our beautiful Delta slash Virgin Atlantic flight. Hopefully we get a whole row to ourselves again. And by our, I mean me, myself, and I. We will see. Goodbye. Goodbye, exterior of London. Till next time. This is a PSA for anyone traveling from London to anywhere. They do not allow you to have a skincare routine. You have to fit every single liquid into this size bag. Every single one. Toothpaste, facial mist, moisturizer, sunscreen, literally everything. Guys, I'm so happy. Come to London in January. You'll get entire aisles to yourself. I am so happy to lay down sideways and actually get some rest. Yeah. But also sad because every time I leave London, I am sad. I'm coming back, don't worry. I've got to come back. I love London. Wait, guys, this is so cute. They serve a little afternoon tea. Look at this. Oh my gosh. It even has clotted cream and some jam. These little sandwiches. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. We're back in LA. I took the flyaway home this time. Normally I take an Uber, but since I landed in the international terminal, it was gonna be a hassle to like take the bus to the Uber area and then the Van Nuys flyaway came up and I live in Van Nuys. So if, if the bus pulls up right when I'm leaving, I'm gonna take it. Almost home. And back home within 72 hours, I think? Maybe 96, technically. <gasps> It's a chicken puppy. Okay, well that felt like a fever dream. I'm gonna process the last few days and yeah, I, I, don't even, I don't even know where I am or what's happening. The flight back is longer, it was 10 and a half hours. So I'm gonna have some food and then probably go to bed. It is so wild to me that Avatar's in concert, touring the world and I got to go see it. I mean, none of this would be happening without you guys. Concert wouldn't be happening. I wouldn't be going to watch it uh, without you guys. I mean, this is all just super, super cool to watch unfold. I feel like this is weirdly like just the, just the beginning, even though it's not, it's been 17 years, but it's like the beginning of a next phase. And like a trailer just came out. I think I'm gonna go try to watch that right now. And I'm so excited. This was so cool. I hope that if you're watching and you wanna go, you do go. They're, they're definitely gonna add some more dates because they're selling out really quickly. So uh, if the one closest to you is sold out, I'm hoping that they will add more dates because they were talking about it. And um, yeah, I hope that you get to see it because it's really, really cool. Okay, I'm gonna go eat dinner. Thanks for coming with me to Avatar in concert in London. Bye guys.